Philippians chapter 3 and verse number 10. As we rise on our feet to honor the word of the Lord. Philippians chapter 3 verse 10. As we rise to honor the word of the Lord, shall we com confess this out loud? That I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings be made conformable unto his death. Again, and that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings be made conformable unto his death. Holy Spirit, the spirit that raised up Jesus from death Quickening now our mortal bodies. Reveal Jesus to us. Unfold the mysteries, the power, the revelation of his resurrection. And impart sin into our lives. In the name of Jesus Christ. Resurrected Jesus, we acknowledge your love and your presence. The eternal price you paid for us. Thank you. In Jesus' name. And the church says, joyfully be seated, that I may know him and the power of of his resurrection. Someone say power of his resurrection. Oh, you better say that if you mean it. If anything will make you glad in your life, if this doesn't make you glad, your salvation is questionable. Somebody say power of his resurrection. The reason for the weak Christianity we are producing this generation, the reason why worldliness has taken over the church and the church is becoming powerless and irrelevant is because we have not been working in that power of his resurrection. Even to the children, if you can grab this early enough in your life, Nothing will stop you from fulfilling destiny. Amen. The children in the house, if you are hearing that, say thank you, Jesus. Am I hearing your voices? And everyone together, let's say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. The preaching of the cross to the world and to those who do not believe is foolishness. But unto us that believe, it is the power of God. The reason today why many people take Christianity as nothing and you don't take it so serious, you see, it will show in the way you go on out for Jesus. If serving the Lord... It, doesn't matter to you anymore. Something is wrong. If forgiveness is hard for you, something is wrong. If you still hold resentment and bitterness, something is wrong. It shows you have not known the power of that resurrection. You cannot behold his glory and then you lay hold on other things as supreme in your heart. In the light of his glory, every other thing is meaningless. The reason why the money forces are gaining strength over people is because we don't know the power of his resurrection. The reason why we cannot work in love is because we don't know the power of his resurrection. That I may know him and the power of his resurrection. In all your knowings, all you need to know is the power of his resurrection. Hey, if the spirit of him that raised up 
Jesus from the dead dwells in you. He that raised up Christ from dead shall also quickening your mortal bodies. When you talk of quickening of your mortal body by a spirit that dwells in you, it's a unique victory that nothing can resist you from attaining the height God has set for you. Yeah. Apostle Paul understood, I said, all I desire is let me just know this power of resurrection. The trouble is, we don't even appreciate the price Jesus paid. The trouble is, we don't even come to the understanding of the price and the privileges we have as God's people. The same power of resurrection the early church knew, they shook nations. Kings and kingdoms were subdued by them. When you move by the power of his resurrection, situations bow before you. You will not take your walk with God lightly. When you see somebody just doing the things the way you like and you don't really care, nothing bothers you, he has not known the power of that resurrection. If it's hard for you to share and talk about that power of res resurrection, something is wrong. You have not discovered it. You can't discover such a great treasure and hide it. The command when Jesus resurrected was go quickly and tell. Say that with me. Go quickly and tell. Say it again. Go. Meaning it's a quick move to spread the power of his resurrection. If anything will make you redundant in your work with God, service to God is, doesn't matter again. The joy of resurrection is for you to walk in that power. May the eternal sacrifice Jesus paid for us never go in vain. The pains, the agony, the suffering if that will not motivate you to arise and, move and do things that will advance the kingdom of God, may that price never be in vain. And listen, if you don't appreciate the price Jesus paid for you while you are yet on earth, there is no guarantee that person will make heaven. Don't deceive yourself. How can he suffer so much? Bear so much a reproach for your sake. Abandon the heavenly glory. And become an, an ordinary man and suffer the consequence of sin. Yet, it doesn't trigger something in you. If nothing of such triggers you, remember it is when the trumpet shall sound. It's the resurrection power that will quicken you to bring you alive. If you can't operate in that resurrection power now, there is no guarantee you will hear the, the sound of the trumpet and make the rapture. There is no guarantee of making heaven. So, you are doing yourself a great danger by refusing to come into the knowledge of the price Jesus paid for you, not appreciating it daily and not expressing it in every area of your life is a great reproach. And also you want to be called by the name of the child of God, you need to discover that power of resurrection. It is the secret to the world, it is foolishness. But to us who believe, it is the power of God. Somebody says it's the power of God. Power. The greatest desire of Apostle Paul that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. When that power of resurrection begins to come alive in you, I tell you, you will appreciate Jesus more than what you are. Many of us are playing religion. Which seems to declare it say we believe, but we deny the power thereof. So denying the power thereof, it is it is a great reproach to the price that Jesus has paid for us. What is the Spirit of God saying to the church? It is time for your spirit man to awake into the reality of whom you have professed to be your savior. Is Jesus Christ your Savior? Okay, only a few of us agree. Is Jesus Christ your Savior? Yes, I believe. Do you believe in the power of his resurrection? 
Do you believe he's still alive and yet alive and will be alive forevermore? The power of his resurrection is all you need to know. And knowing that, you're talking about deeply and intimately acquainted with him. Jesus' death was so secured that rising up will be impossible. His suffering and all that the price he paid, it was just for my sake. And the moment you tap into that power of resurrection, everything about you will turn around. The secret of victory, the secret of healing, the secret of deliverance, the secret of overcoming demonic attacks, the secret of overcoming dark powers, they are all revealed in his power of his resurrection. When you look at the suffering, the agony Jesus went through, if he did this for my sake, and is the head, and we are the body. It was not, the affliction was not only on the head, it was on the entire body. Meaning, he carried us along. When he died, we died with him. When he rose, we rose with him. When he ascended, we ascended with him. When he seated at the right hand of power, we are seated together with him in heavenly places, far above principalities and powers. So what makes you unique and what makes devil envious of you is because you carry that power of resurrection. Somebody say that I may know him, I may know him. Intimately, intimately, deeply, deeply, even the power of his resurrection. You receive that say amen threefold. Amen, amen, amen. Look at the order by which Jesus suffered. And the Bible said, he did that for me. Doing that for me, I can lay hold on that purpose and manifest the blessing. He stepped in to the reproach I should have been carrying today that I may be free from reproach. He took my place of suffering that I may be free from suffering. He took my place of affliction, rejection, being forsaken, that I may enjoy the love and the peace. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believe in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. Shout hallelujah. Jesus Christ was beaten, crushed, wounded, bruised, you see, how can I take that lightly? That God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not in putting unto us our trespasses. So, the, the creator of this beautiful world, the creator of the heavens and earth, had seen that one day a person like me will be born. And he went ahead and said, I will pay the price for you. The kind of beating, it was a scourging that would tear off the, bone, the, the flesh. It was disfigured. There was no comeliness in him that we should behold any beauty in him. The Bible said, he pleased the Lord to bruise him, to crush him, just for my sake. And as they were, he was receiving the stripes and the blood gushing out as fountains. It was for my sake. That woundedness was for my transgressions. The, the, the bruise was for, for, for my redemption, purging away of my iniquity. The stripes was for the redemption of my soul. And by this, I can be reconciled back to God. Who is here that want to appreciate Jesus for just paying the price for a mortal me? Are you really appreciating that? Say, resurrected Jesus? I appreciate that price of woundedness, of being bruised, of being crushed, of being chastised just for my sake. Can you just appreciate that and give him praise?
Can you appreciate that and give him praise? Is that good enough for the master? Uh, if I were you, I will give him a standing ovation to say, Jesus, just for me you did this, I give you praise. Just for my sake you did this, I give you praise. Worship him and bless his name. He paid this price just for your sake. Bless his holy name. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Lord. That voice of appreciation, may he receive resurrection power. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Because you are wounded for my transgressions. You are bruised for my iniquity. The chastisement of my peace was upon you. And by your stripes, I am healed. Therefore, let the wounds the bruises, the chastisement upon my Lord Jesus avail for me and establish me in victory. In the name of Jesus, you received that say yes. Do you know when they brought vinegar and gall for him to drink, he refused. Why? The purpose was to cause numbness so that he will not feel the pains of the torture. Jesus said, let me feel the pain. Wow. Meaning, he made a resolve to feel my pains. He would have taken, the, taken that and then there will be numbness of the body and he won't feel any pain. Jesus said, I'll take it. I won't take it. I want to feel their pains. I want to feel what it takes when somebody will release injurious words that will pierce through your heart. When somebody will guilt you or cheat you, take advantage of you, do something so woundedness, he can feel that pain. Meaning, I'm not alone. He bore the pains that I may be free from pains. Who wants to say, Father, I thank you, dear Lord Jesus, for bearing my pains. Oh, why not thank him? As we are thanking him, the pains being cured. Thank him for bearing your pains, for bearing your pains. Oh, hallelujah. Listen, amen. There are a lot of things Jesus did for me in paying the sacrifice. It was a perfect sacrifice. Well prepared for it. The Bible said they parted his garment. Render him naked and shame for my sake. What kind of shame or reproach being programmed against you? Jesus bought that price for you. Ah, thank you, dear Lord Jesus, for bearing my shame and bearing my reproach. Oh, can somebody celebrate him? For bearing your shame, no more shame, no more reproach. Ah. I cannot be put to shame. I cannot be reproached. Nothing can ridicule my life. I refuse to be ridiculed. I refuse to be put to shame. Thank you, my resurrected Jesus, for bearing my pains, bearing my reproach, taking away my ridicule. No more ridicule. Oh, you cannot be ridiculed. Can somebody celebrate Jesus that I can no more be ridiculed? I can no more be ridiculed. Thank you, Jesus. I can no more be ridiculed. I am free from shame and pains. In Jesus' name. And when they were to crucify him, he was made to carry his cross. It wasn't that the cross would have been so that heavy. Although he was bruised, painful experiences of being bruised with blood gushing out, it still would have at least managed, but he felt the weight of sin. My weight of sin brought him down. He fell not once. Meaning, he, he fell to rescue those who fall. 
So, anything that has brought me low, I am hopeful, full of faith that I will rise again. It was possible for him to carry the cross all through, but the weight of sin was heavy. The burden of sin upon your life, whatever burden that you are carrying, Jesus bore this for your sake. Thank you, my resurrected Jesus. Because you, your word said, cast your burdens upon me, for I care for you. I thank you, Jesus, because you care for me. I thank you, my Lord Jesus, because you bore all my burdens. The load that will have crushed me, you bore this load of burdens. I appreciate you this morning. Be looking at me. My burdens are being rolled away. Because Jesus bore all my burdens he bore the load of pains. Resurrected Jesus. How wonderful, how gracious you are. You carry the load that will have crushed me. You carry the load that will have destroyed me. You carry the weight that I cannot even move or take a step. Oh, who is casting his or her burden onto Jesus right here? You cannot carry that load. It's too heavy for you. But Jesus bore the price. He paid the price. He carried your load. He carried your body. Is that the best way to appreciate him? He carried your load. He carried your body. He carried the weight of sin. Just to redeem your soul. Just to save your soul. Resurrected Jesus. Thank you for taking over my weight. The weight of sin. The weight of, of affliction. You bore my burdens and I glorify your name. Thank you, my resurrected Jesus. Amen. He took that load just for your sake. He fell carrying that load so that I may rise again. Ah, you, I, you are guaranteed that no matter what has kept you low, you will rise again. Yeah. No matter what has brought you low, you will rise again. Yeah. Let me put it right. I, I, I will rise again. Yeah. Nothing will keep me low. Nothing will keep me down. Jesus carried the burden of sin. He fell and was crushed that I may rise again. Therefore, I decree my life, rise again. My glory, rise again. Everything about me, arise. Arise. Everything about my life come alive. Arise. Arise. Ah, you cannot remain in your falling state. You cannot remain in your falling state. Nothing must keep you down. Nothing must keep you low. I see you arising. Oh, you better tap into it. Yeah, thank you, Jesus. I see you arising. Nothing can keep you low. That yoke is destroyed. Nothing can keep you down. That yoke is destroyed. Can somebody appreciate Jesus for that? Hey! Kamasha Kalabaha. Aha. Aha. Yes. 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 Hey! Karaleo Shaba. Nothing will keep me low. Nothing will keep me down. I arise above it. I prevail above it. Jesus fell that I may rise. Give him praise, somebody. In Jesus' name we pray. Look at somebody eye to eye and say, I celebrate your glorious arising. Oh, you better look around and confirm it over somebody. Aha, 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 aha. Hey. Choir, I celebrate your glorious arising. In the name of Jesus, I celebrate your glorious arising. In Jesus' name we pray. Somebody say, as the Lord God of Israel liveth, and as his spirit lives, nothing will keep me down, nothing will keep me low. Nothing will keep me beneath. 
Nothing will make me go under. I refuse to go under. I refuse to remain below. I arise. I arise in glory. I arise in honor. I arise in power. I arise in glory. I rise in honor. I rise in power. In the name of Jesus. Arise. 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 In the name of Jesus. I decree your glory. Arise. Arise. Now. Arise. Everything in your life that has been brought low. In the name of Jesus. Arise now. In Jesus name we pray. And when they crucified him. They put the nails. Into his hands. The nails. Into his feet. Fulfilling that prophecy. Of being. A sure nail. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Fasting him. As a nail. In a sure place. Somebody say a nail in a sure place. Yeah. Meaning, when you fasting the hands, fasting the feet, you're going nowhere. Someone say fasting. Meaning, it said it was a nail in a sure place. What did Jesus showcase by that? According to the prophecy of Isaiah, in that Isaiah chapter 22, he said it was a nail in a sure place. There are a lot of things you desire to have in life. The more you gather them, God forbid, the more they are not gather, gathering at all, the more they disappear. But when you take something and do, boom. What are you saying? Stay there. Jesus paid the price that any good thing that comes my way, boom, stay there. No demon can remove it. They are just wasting their time. When God created you, he imparted special gifts in you. The enemy will love to transfer the gifts. The enemy will love to usurp the gift. That was the case of mankind. When God gave us dominion over all the works of his hand. Someone say, I have dominion, I have dominion. over all the works of his hand. <laughs> and when we lost that dominion, and Jesus came to restore the dominion, so that the dominion will no longer be taken away, nail it there. When you take something and nail what do you, what, which instrument you use in trying to move it? Oh, it shows on you, men. You don't do repairs in your house, you see? It shows. Hey! Ah, okay, you are just waking up. It shows you don't do repairs. Shout hallelujah. Bring any instrument from any realm. Once it's nailed, it's secured. My life is secured in favor. Amen. Nothing can take that favor from me. Amen. It is secured. Amen. Because resurrected Jesus is the nail in a sure place. Amen. Blessings are secured with me. Amen. Favor secured with me. Amen. Joy secured with me. Amen. And nothing and take it away. Yeah. Oh, those of us who know territorial intercessions, when you go to places to stir up the redemptive purpose of God for their lives, by the time you, you are done, you don't, because the work of darkness, they love to come back and undo. So we decree, resurrected Jesus, the nail in a sure place. We have released the, your redemptive purpose upon this land. We nail it in. Let them do any ritual or sacrifice. It cannot be blotted out. The gospel will remain. So, it's a great prayer. 
when you have made some deep proclamation, see, resurrected Jesus the nail in a sure place. I nail in this prayer, secured and fastened. Meaning that prayer will work with you, for you anywhere, anytime. Let the wind of life blow, you are secured. Let there be wild wind, I, you are secured. Are there things you have asked from God? Say, I resurrected Jesus, the nail in a sure place. I nail it in the testimony of this prayer. Fasting with Jesus, the, the, the nail in a sure place. Somebody declared that every good thing I've declared over my life. Resurrected Jesus, the nail in a sure place. I nail in the testimonies of my answer prayers secured and fasting by Jesus the nail in a sure place they nail him that has significance to us and blood and what, blood came out it did not end there he was crucified with thieves on both sides It was not, yes, it was not that they just wanted, they didn't want to crucify him alone. Mankind was robbed of his redemptive purpose from the very beginning when the dominion was usurped from us and we became naked. Jesus became naked in order to restore us back to glory. And so, when Jesus was crucified among thieves, that wish you saw the, the, the dominion from man from the very, very beginning was programmed. Thinking if he's going to be the savior, steal it again. As you have robbed man, you can rob him of this. The other one, you can see the provocation. If you are truly the son of man, God, save yourself and save us. The other one repented. He broke their power of agreement. The agreement of thieves to rob again could no longer prosper. It could not be robbed of the blessing. We could not be robbed of the blessing. Somebody say, agreement of thieves and robbers. Over my life. You are broken asunder. You are brought to nothing. And I prevail over you by the blood of Jesus. I will no longer be robbed of my blessing. Jesus destroyed the agreement of robbers so that for that purpose, mankind will no longer be robbed of blessing. We have been robbed once, you will not be robbed again. We have, we, things who have, been, who have been taken away from us once, it cannot be taken away again. Jesus broke that agreement so that once you are blessed, with the nail in a sure place, the blessing is irremovable. Somebody said, my blessings are irremovable. In Jesus' name. So Jesus destroyed the agreement of thieves and robbers in order to reconcile us back to God. Somebody said, nothing will rob me of my glory anymore. Oh, you better declare that. You better declare that. I will not be robbed of peace. I will not be robbed of joy. I will not be robbed of blessing. I will not be robbed of favor. In Jesus' name. He did not do that alone. They now put an inscription upon his head, the king of the Jews. Someone say, the king. The king. When you, you need to know the composition of human beings, you have made of spirit, soul, and body. When people relate to you, they are not relating on the physique they are saying, but they are relating with you based on what your spirit, man, or soul is interpreting to them. What kind of inscription are you carrying all about? Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that were against us, which was contrary to us. He has taken them out of our ways and nailing them onto his cross. And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made an open disgrace of them, triumphing over them in it. Somebody shout, Hallelujah! That is not a shout. You better shout, Hallelujah! I don't know what kind of inscription they have put over your life. That you are trying to say you are good, but people read 
a wrong label. They see an, a strange mark upon your life. And that mark is what is attracting anything to your life, depending on the label you carry. But Jesus, when they were putting the inscription, they never knew they were fulfilling prophecy. Means the king of them all. Is the king, he can rule over any form of inscription they have put over your life. You too can rule over any inscription. Amen. What is it that you, you are expecting something good, contrary happen, evil inscription? What is it that you don't deserve something so bad, but the bad thing happening, evil inscription? Why are people set to ridicule you, evil inscri inscription? It is not about the people. It is about what they can read about you. So, why not lay hold and connect with the inscription upon our Lord Jesus, the king, to rub away, to rule over, and abolish evil inscription over your life. Oh, Lord, help us. Say, my resurrected Jesus, I thank you for, your, the, for the inscription upon your head upon the cross where you paid the eternal sacrifice and by the inscription upon my Lord Jesus any evil inscription upon my life be abolished by the blood of Jesus be cancelled by the blood of Jesus be rendered powerless in Jesus name Somebody said, divine inscription is upon me. Inscription of favor is upon me. Inscription of power is upon me. Inscription of blessing is upon me. You better shout it, shout it, shout it, shout it. Amen. And remember, before they crucify him, they did a mockery, a mockery ritual. Of a king for him. They made a crown of thorns and put it on his head. Oh, many of us just take that for light, for granted. It's not that you just wear it like your heart. Piercing like a nail type of thorns. When they put it there, they bang it, bang in the nail into the skull. Bang it in. So already the brain is damaged. Bang it in. And the blood was dripping down. That fulfilled the prophecy. When man sinned and God said, curse is the ground for thy sake. In sorrow shall thou eat of it all the days of your life. Thorns also, and tissue shall it bring forth unto thee. The, the consequence of the curse, when God faced man, he said, he cursed the ground for our sake. He said, it will, it will bring tongues. So the product of that curse, bringing out tongues, Jesus took it on and banged it in. Unknown to them, as they were banging in the sharp, pointed, nail-like tongues deep into his skull, what were they doing? And the blood was touching those pointed edges of the tongues. It was destroying the curse upon mankind. It was destroying the curse upon my life.